Well, um, hello everyone. Even though it's late where I'm here, it's already after midnight. I really thought I should quickly make this video. It's the 26th of January and I'm still in India for a few more days. My suitcase hasn't shown up just by the way. I'm, I'm here now for almost three weeks and traveling back on Sunday and um, I will go home without my main piece of luggage which as I understand is still stuck in Montreal. Anyway, uh, that's a crazy story and as I said it's just a fractal of the craziness our world is in right now and this is just a starting point, it will get worse. We just have to work with it, hmm? do our best, that was not very smart. <laughs> if I would travel again I would pick it up after the first leg and then carry it over through security again and then um, check it into the international li airline I'm traveling with. Anyway, just I thought also as a warning this is um, what we are facing right now. The whole system is breaking down left, right and center as I indicated in my last video which was a little long but it's um, yeah, it's showing you all the, the many um, indications. Anyway, so here we are. This is um, tomorrow and there will be an exact opposition of Ceres to Juno and within less than, I guess, 10 minutes or so, Juno will be having an exact conjunction with Salacia. So this is rare that three planets all at once are lining up and uh, here they are. This is Salacia and Juno here in the conjunction and Ceres here on the other side. Well, this is about um, working together, having fun working together and clarifying something which has gone wrong but bringing light into it and a love the unconditional love of series of figuring things out something something mom would do kind of that's the energy of series this is the area of hexagram 18 work on what has been spoiled and Salacia and Juno are in hexagram 17 following which has that enthusiastic flavor of just let it let it let's get it done I guess that's the way to say it yeah and then um, naturally Salacia and Juno here are closely um, conjunct Ju Jupiter as well it's a little hard to see here this is um, 646 and Jupiter is here at 5 degrees 12 at the present time approaching so this brings volume into this issue now I show you the next chart and then you understand why I think this is such an important chart see um, a few days later on the 30th this axis is exactly in the um, in the horizon here and naturally Jupiter and Chiron which are having their heliocentric um, alignment here at 15 degrees 15 in Aries that's right here So Jupiter and Chiron, I guess it's pretty obvious. This is a theme of healing and bringing to light what has gone wrong. So Jupiter is bringing again its power, its massive 
voice into Chiron's world, so to say. Chiron in Aries, yes, it is about uncovering all that has gone wrong and taking responsibility for it. Very important in Aries. It's also the understanding that we have the power to change things. As soon as we take responsibility for what it is, it is that no more delegating things, but once we understand that we have the power to shift things around, that is also the moment when we truly take responsibility for the situations we are in. This is the chart which initiates that new cycle, Jupiter and Chiron, they meet once every, well, probably about every 15 years or so, I'm guessing here. And um, while this is happening heliocentrically, which means it's the energetic setup, the frequency which is now there in the background in that way, because um, geocentrically still it's quite a bit for Jupiter to catch up. This is the same moment here now, geocentrically you see Jupiter still at 5 degrees 50 here versus Chiron at 12.35. But what I'm really pointing out here is this synchronicity of Ceres at the ascendant here in the geocentric chart and Salasia and Juno here on the other side. Now this is really just the start. Um, uh, I have a, a few other charts here. So it really shows that um, some big healing is initiated right now and it's not nice at first it's really the purification is kicking into overdrive you could say it's going all at once many many things come at light just um, was watching that um, project where it does coverage of that doctor of that pharmaceutical company I very careful I don't want to get banned here and um, many other similar stories it's all coming out of the box now um, the avalanche has definitely been kicked off now what truly illustrates the bigger picture here is Nessus and Orcus 13th of 17 exact oppositions Orcus is here 1450 and 1450 here it happens that when these are exactly opposed this time they are right in the horizon axis ascendant descendant or of the global chart which you know I choose Greenwich which is one seventh of the circle above the equator kind of indicating that resonance to the galactic environment that greater picture is revealed through that particular place on the planet it's a fractal in that sense so I mean this chart is speaking volumes it's not only Again, Mars here in Midheaven. You remember we had that exact same configuration when Mars turned direct on the 12th of uh, January. 
which made it clear that yes, Mars would become super important and Mars has started to gain traction as I showed you, it was in the 10th degree, that means between whatever 9 and 10 um, uh, actually between um, well, uh, between 8, eight and 9, between um, January the 1st and January 24th. Now we are in the phase from January 24th till the 30th in the 10th degree and then from the 30th on we are in the 11th degree. So these are very powerful degrees as I have shown you in my last video. Please go back to it. I don't want to repeat everything here. But just saying with Mars and Midheaven a void of course moon here in Gemini interesting here to exactly aligned with chaos PNR and Ospolos still quite close to showing that it is the strong voice of um, of the people which is no more kept under wraps BNR is that freedom loving standing up sovereignty innovative frequency of taking charge mm -hmm. chaos is the primordial order but also it is the indication of things first being disintegrated broken down into fragments so it the natural order can come back on its own that's really what we are seeing the disassembly of everything and then we are to really capture that enormous opportunity to bring our new frequency in to to remodel reality that's really what it is and um, it is that intention of rewriting the earth grid as Jacqueline Hobbes Oracle Girl says it of us actively taking control energetically and in that sense there's some magic there um, uh, occurring but yes the first step is to expose everything bring it out into the open now why orcas and nessus yes um this is a uh, question is coming up nessus is the energy of whatever has gone wrong which is um kind of you could say infested by the the real virus and then um, the the parasite the parasitical energy and orcus is the one which is transmuting which is bringing it to light in that sense and then it will come to a healing natural healing Nessus and orcus as you um, heard have 17 oppositions in total between 2018 and roughly 2025 it's always interesting to look at the heliocentric opposition which there is only one of and that was the one I have here a dual chart of that uh, I thought I wanted to show you here both charts at once it's a little smaller hopefully you can see it but that is um, when they had a heliocentric conjunction in t September 2020 um, with um, opposition sorry Orcus here 1205 and Nessus here okay I have here the geocentric um, perspective of that chart let's just change that quickly so you truly see what I mean okay let's go back to that ok 
Okay. Yes, 11.45 it was heliocentric position of masses and or or orcas here. Now we'll get back to this chart in a minute uh, just to show you um, how this is all interrelated. I wanted to actually to start off a little different here with the heliocentric Juno Chiron conjunction dating back to December 11th just a month ago or so a little more which started a new round of these two energies how they would express each other interesting that when this alignment was exact for the energy you see again the um, 7th 8th degree of Libra Aries was here highlighted that is the one we just looked at before here in um, which one was it um, this one here I guess mm -hmm. yeah see when Jupiter and Chiron have their heliocentric conjunction so you see there's um, something going on Chiron with Juno Chiron with Jupiter Juno brings in the people and people working together as a team closing shoulders as I said many times this is initiating the downfall of the control system and people really starting to stand together no more um, being tricked to um, be played out against one another that's the real um, uh, issue here we have to um, resolve really and that's what in this Juno Chiron um, meeting was initiated that coming together as a people a very very beautiful chart here with the cancer moon vertex which is really coming together in a higher mission to expose darkness with palace and the black moon uh, this is really what brings people together now with the pluto opposition yeah it's, it was very strong chart here so um furthermore look at the descendant here this is eight degrees 42 mars stationed at the time mars was still going backwards and mars stationed at 807 right on the descendant here of this chart so that was on january the 12th since yes i mean lots and lots has been happening it's kind of really the dominoes are falling i guess that's really the best way to say it so this has been at the starting point at least of the sequence of charts which i'm showing you here which are all interrelated in some way or other so the next one i just threw in here because it will play a, a big role um, in the early days of february that first degree of um, Virgo we will come back to that but TX 300 was the energy and I show you it is um, in Taurus right here one of the unnamed um, Cooper belt objects TX 300 has kind of shown its face of what it symbolizes what it is represented by a year ago during the big trucker convoy to Ottawa mm. it was really standing out so I figured out this and actually that was 
confirmed by what other researchers had found <coughs> excuse me that TX300 is loud big kind of a little bit rude positioning itself it so it can't be overlooked and overheard and I guess that was definitely the this, this signature of that whole tracker convoy so this energy is again um, getting into um, direct mode actually already has on January the 19th is now starting to move forward again and um, we can definitely expect uh, that push to become stronger and um, yes as I say this first degree of Virgo will play a, a critical role when the moon is arriving here this will be just a short after um, full moon uh, I guess on the 7th uh, around of February I'm expecting some, some really big um, shifts it could be caused by news releases it could also be triggered by energetic occurrences in the on the sun so big solar flares I'm expecting too there will be a heliocentric Mars Jupiter square and um, Mars actually also heliocentric Earth Uranus square simultaneously uh, more on that soon so TX300 and um, with the moon at zero degrees Capricorn here yes it is um, a crystallization which is going on and the uh, sun in the very last section of Capricorn here in a Pluto conjunction with a vertex here too yes the higher aim is to expose power power structures and naturally all the mishandling of power which is in that um, focal point and then yes you see the this was just short before the Chinese New Year so we already have this black moon sun opposition here the sun closing in on that so pretty loaded chart also with the part of fortune here on the black moon this is actually extremely exact only by three minutes of arc yes something is looming there and then uh, actually you've set now so um, prominent here t squaring the ascendant descendant the venus saturn approaching applying um, a conjunction all of that together yes this is again just a seed chart which is getting activated really soon so um then we had a saturn entering the uh, sagittarian ward of aquarius mm -hmm. big one too saturn crossing the 25 degree mark meaning it's in the segment 20 5 till 2730 is Aquarius resonates with Sagittarius it's every two and a half degrees you see um, yeah if you're new to to, to hear my um, channel uh, you will get to um, learn all these little tricks and quirks over time how to fine-tune the chart and read the energy so between 25 and 27 30 yes this is the sub node of Sagittarius coming in and naturally Sagittarius is the sign of coming forward putting that fire and that push for truth for so everybody can see and, and know that's kind of the Sagittarian energy and Venus in that segment too and then yes <laughs> how could it be the moon at that moment when Saturn pushes to a higher 
frequency of taking on its mission and Sagittarius has definitely also that undertone of being on a mission and um, kind of a, a crusade so the moon conjunct Nessus how could it be just a few days before we ha will have this next Orcus Nessus opposition then yesterday heliocentric Venus entered Aries S shows that Venus is also now becoming more strong Venus as I talked about uh, 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 quite a few times being now the evening star becoming ever more kind of uh, rising into the, 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 the evening sky becoming really prominent in the months coming April, May, June when it will reach its maximum so Venus is slowly building strength for Venus as an evening star is that again bonding together and um, harmonizing within the greater population pulling in the same direction at the same time that um, conjunction here of these two asteroids Astraea and um, Vesta Vesta is the serving the higher cause Astraea the energy of cleaning up and and, and and being ready to take action to do the dirty jobs so there's kind of a, an almost a higher calling to do that exactly that in Aries approaching Jupiter and Chiron again as a big um, stellium you could say this is the big theme here it's all about cleaning up and healing at the source hmm? Jupiter um, is opposed by by a Mercury nonetheless hmm? adding voice to that process then this is the real game changer hmm? the black moon crossed the two degree Leo mark today just hours earlier before I did this recording or do this recording here hexagon 31 is um, continuity it's a sh actually uh, an energy of leadership of going first of taking charge of standing up and saying yes let's do it and I will pave the way forward that is the energy of these degrees two degrees till um, 730 730 is this the area where hexagram 31 rules with not just Aries rising but the moon and Aries too moon um, here conjunct the equatorial point Juno Jupiter a beautiful strong conjunction also Salasia is here again Salasia which always shows up when we are having fun when we are enjoying what we are doing there's there's this passion to, to really push um, towards what's now possible the enlightenment of everyone and to come to terms with what's been going on naturally is not such a nice thing but it is um, there is some real heart in it and and, and wanting to enjoy that ride of, of, of coming together even though it's on a, a darker mode 
Now, if we look at this moment heliocentrically, I found this really telling. Look at Chiron here. Just um, shy of conjunct the ascendant, and that's actually where um, Jupiter and Chiron will meet just a couple days later here on uh, in this chart here which I shown you and that one here 1515 you see that's when they will be exact conjunct 1515 and they go back to here hmm? that's where the degree is really so anyway 1515 1542 very close so the that leading um, the pack towards healing and uh, the, the is what the well the unraveling process really in, entails hmm? or in other words the shadow is now really thrust right into the center of the stage lots of limelight lots of direct focus is put on what really is the cause of all that um, many people um, falling ill and dying and whatnot i mean there's so many layers this is just one of them and um, as you see, saw here in the heliocentric also mercury here at the seventh house cusp opposing um chiron Yes, it's pretty obvious. This is becoming very, very loud. February is the month for the, of a huge purification. If you want, it is. Um, yes, it's important to to heal from within and to not put too much emotional charge in it actually emotions really don't help at that stage it is the understanding of what's been going on, on this planet that we have been infested by a alien frequency as again Jacqueline Hobbs really greatly explains it and this force is neutral at first it is only when there's openings in the human aura when these energies can take possession and then there's negative um, deeds which are coming out of that so she really wants uh, makes the point that evil is um, a very tricky word to use to divide uh, people into good and evil it's not so easy it's more along the line that most of the people who are still on the wrong side of history they are um, not really engaged in doing that they're just following orders they're just a kind of um, unconscious about what they're doing um, and hopefully by bringing consciousness fueling consciousness and these people will be able to recognize and to repent and to see that they have been used abused basically and um, so that's kind of the direction we are moving into yes once more i want to show you this chart when Ceres opposes Juno and Salacia simultaneously and again you have that Nessus um, Orcus here 
in the ascendant descendant axis that is what is about to be remedied and energy infused into this um, transmutation of the of that alien frequency Nessus pretty much represents that abuse of humans and orcas coming in bringing its deep alchemical ability to put things in a different light to take off the charge and remedy bring remedy so let's now um, wrap this up and go back to the chart I started with which is the Nessus Orcus opposition the 13th, the 13th of 17 and yes again I just want to say it once more as it's so unusual to have when an ex uh, an, um, uh, an, um, an aspect an alignment is exact to be exactly uh, congruent with the ascendant descendant which is the kind of the plane where things are manifesting in versus the vertical axis which is the power axis where um, the that manifestations fueled from you could almost see this as a as a as an um, a t a twisting top I don't think I think that's how you call that these ch child's toys this is the vertical axis which is quiet and this is the circumference of that uh, toy which moves at lightning speed flinging and in that sense manifesting itself so again with Mars here at the 10th house cusp there is work to do Mars in Gemini the work is to vocalize what we know hmm? to speak it out to not be shy anymore and now I want to show you the these two, two charts um, let me just um, put it so that you can see so let's look at the um, heliocentric chart here which is kind of the the um, archetype of, of these 17 con oppositions if you will it's when from the sun's perspective these two bodies were in exact opposing positions and in heliocentric again I want to say that once more because in heliocentric perspective every body moves forward all the time there's only one opposition versus in geocentric astrology it's earth itself which plays that role of um, kind of swinging back uh, the pendulum for uh, over many times and when uh, two bodies are very slow due to earth's kind of going forth and back from left to right due to its rotation around the sun these two bodies seem to be um, going forward and backwards because they're so slow they're so far away that's kind of the idea now if we look at where um, the black moon is at present at two degrees Leo and that's where we have um, okay um, 
Well, I guess I have to go back to the geocentric to, to show you what I wanted here. But uh, there is one more interesting one, Mars Chiron here. Again, in those same degrees, seven and something. Mm -hmm. Just show you the opposition of Ceres and and um, Pallas mm -hmm. and Sorasia. Mm -hmm. This one here. Let me see if I get it right here. No, just this one here, Ceres, Juno, Salacia, right. right. Six, seven degrees, yes. Yeah, it's more clear. Mm. Then, um, well, hmm. It's a little small here, but there's a few other really interesting congruencies. Congruences. Um, I should write it down before I record. To not having to search for things here while you guys are waiting. I guess that the South Node Juno is another interesting one. A congruency and um, right here okay let's um, zoom in on the two degree um, Aquarius here where the part of fortune is two degrees and something Leo and let's go back for one more time to the Helios to the geocentric of that 12 56 heliocentric chart and here it is and then we do redraw okay you see here is Hygia yes that's the one I wanted to show you Hygia is the one which is health well-being so the black moon here resonating and the part of fortune here on the other side 2 degrees 02 it is really the unraveling of that whole um, uh, big scam which is now going into hyper drive it is super interesting to watch it is not so um, uh, nice to really feel the energies how they are erupting we're getting very close to that point when um when it's 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 really painful um to be in this world right now anyway we have to navigate through it it's laid out in astrology that's really my job I'm kind of a commentator showing you why things are the way they are and that uh, there is no surprise that actually this is the design of reality um, this is the way to to um, to a better world we have to go through this process of unraveling and of disclosure of all the dark stuff coming to light it's not easy but we can do it mm -hmm. we were born for this as Jacqueline says and I truly feel it we are here for a reason and we have just started on our job it will get much better once we are past this intersection from May on forward, I would say, when Jupiter is entering Taurus, there will come more and more of that silver lining out on the other side, where you will see it's worth it. Up 
between now and then this is the, the real um, stretch of, 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 of difficult emotions uh, being front and center and um, we will manage I'm sure it's just take one day at a time and one moment at a time and be there for others help assist hold hands that's all we can do and we will transmute yes we will purify whatever comes up purification is happening automatically once things come to light once things are looked at and exposed and it's it's really literally the sun's light which heals thank you for joining and listening and then um, talk to you soon when i'm back in canada it will be a week or so probably at least okay <laughs> meanwhile do the best you can and i guess that's the way to say okay bye bye